This screen test pertains to materials from Module 2, Lesson 26. It's based upon the problem set. It includes some new items that I've actually gotten from the teacher lessons that I think will help uh, illustrate some of the concepts we're talking about a little more clearly. I also include a fairly complicated word problem that uses tape diagrams. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is from uh, the teacher's guide here. And we're going to ignore some of this uh, other material over here. And we're going to focus on these uh, estimates and solutions. And what this does is it shows some of the thought process involved using estimates, but also decomposition. And I'll illustrate that with a little explanation beyond what we see on the screen. The first thing we look at is the eights in the hundreds place. We can't work with the eight and the twenty-six because this eight in the hundreds place, or we could say eight hundreds, is greater than twenty-six. So we're going to decompose my eight hundreds to eighty tens plus three tens, and we have eighty-three tens. Well, what do we do now? Well, we take our divisor and we rounded it to thirty. We looked at our 83, and we're looking for a compatible number with a 30, and we get 90. So we make an estimate of three tens, and note that we record that quotient in the tens place. The next thing that is done is we multiply our 3 times the 26. And again, this is 26 tens. We multiply it, we get 78 tens. And you can see that we record that under our dividend right here. The next thing we do is subtract. We subtract and we get 5. We have 5 tens. Okay, 5 tens is less than 26. That's a good thing. Because if it's greater than 26, we know that we uh, need to go back and make some corrections. So now we're going to we're going to uh, trade my five tens for fifty ones, and I'm going to bring down four more ones, and I have a total of fifty four ones. Again, I'll take my divisor, I round it to thirty. I take my fifty four. I'm looking for a compatible number divisible by thirty, and sixty. It becomes my rounding for my dividend part of the problem and we have an estimate of two ones. So we're going to continue our problem. I'll have 26, in this case it's 26 ones. And we're going to multiply it by two and we get 52, which we have recorded under the dividend. Oh, wrong tool. And there we go. All right, so we subtract that and we get a two, two ones. And, okay, since we have two ones, we're going to trade those for 20 tenths. We bring down the one more tenth, and now we have 26 tenths. Well, we notice that the 26 in our problem here is the same as the 26 in our divisor, so that makes it quite easy, and you'll see the estimate right here. So we have the... Um, 1 times 26 and minus 26 we get 0. Of course we would also check this problem and we do that by multiplying the quotient times the divisor and then we add, well of course we're not going to add a, a remainder here, uh, 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, regroup the 1, 6 times 3 is 18 plus 1 is 19. Now we multiply from the tens place, or the ones place in this case actually. So 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 3 is 6. We find the sum of our partial products. And we know that we multiplied this times 10 to make it 321. So we're going to have to take this and divide it by 10. We could also look at this as uh, 321 tenths, and this would be 8,346 tenths as well, and we know that we will 
move that decimal over one place to the left, or we move all our digits one place to the right, and we get 834 and 6 tenths. We can see that that matches our dividend. I'll do one more example uh, using uh, materials from the teacher's uh, guide. I'm not going to go in through quite so much detail. All right, so again, we see uh, our estimates here along with our actual pro uh, problem. Again, we look at our eight ones. Uh, that's not going to work with our 41. So we're now going to decompose my eight ones into 80 tenths. And we're going to add the 6 tenths that's already in the tenths place. So we have 86 tenths. We're going to take our divisor and we're going to round it to 40. And we'll see that 86 over here, the 86 tenths, it rounds to a compatible number of 80 tenths. So we divide 80 tenths by 40, we get 2 tenths. The 2 tenths is recorded here. And next we multiply by estimate which would be 2 uh, times the divisor and I get the 82 that we see recorded below the dividend. We subtract, we get a 4. That's 4 tenths. We exchange 4 tenths for 40 hundredths and we bring down that 1 hundredth so we have 41 hundredths. Again, this is pretty simple. Our difference here is equal to our divisor so it's easy enough to tell that we have a 1 in that place. All right, moving on. This is uh, something that you'll see, uh, something similar to this in your homework. Let's read it. We have 156 divided by 24 and 102 divided by 15. Both have a quotient of 6 with a remainder of 12. Are these division expressions equivalent to each other? Use your knowledge of decimal division to justify your answer. Let's start with A. I, I really don't have a lot of space down uh, there, so we're going to go down below B and get started with that. Well, what do we have to do? They say, well, we're going to have to divide these using decimals. So I have 24 into 156. I know that I can't work with the hundreds. So I'm going to trade those for tens. We have 15 tens. That's not going to work either. And we have 156 ones. Well, in this case, I'm not going to round to the nearest 10 because 25 is nice and easy to work with. So I'm going to put my estimate up above here to uh, conserve on space. So I'm going to have 25. Okay, well, 25s are easy to work with. We think quarters. And we're looking for something close to 156. Well, dollar fifty would be six quarters, right? So we can divide a dollar fifty or one hundred fifty in this case by six, and that gives us a reasonable estimate. So I'm going to now multiply my estimate of six times the divisor of twenty-four. We'll do a regroup, and I get one hundred forty-four. Let's record that quotient. Okay, now we're going to put in a decimal and we're going to do some subtracting. Let's uh, do a little erasing here too so I can get a little more space. All right, we'll subtract and we get 12. Okay, we're going to exchange uh, those 12 ones for 120 tenths. And I'm going to think quarters again. And this time I've got 25. And I'm thinking that 120 is close to 125. And that would be 5. We'll again multiply my estimate of 5 times the divisor of 24. And I get 120. We'll record our quotient, we have 6 and 5 tenths. Moving along, and making a little more space. Let's solve the other, uh, the other division problem. I have 15 into 102. Now, 
I'm going to look at the hundreds. I can't work with that. Decompose the one hundred to ten tenths. I can't work with that either. So I'm now going to exchange my ten tenths for one hundred ones. I have a hundred two ones. That's greater than fifteen. Uh, fifteen. I use some uh, strategies. I, I think of two fifteens as thirty. Okay, so two times fifteen. is 30. Now I'm going to just kind of work my multiples of 30, 30, 60, 90, 120. So I know that this is going to be 4 times 15, 6 times 15, and 8 times 15. Well I think that 90 is going to be as close as I can get. I don't want to uh, estimate over. We know that that often leads to problems. So I'm going to try 6 in my ones place. I'm going to multiply 15 times 6. We know already that that is 90. We're going to put that in. We're going to subtract. And we get 12. Put in my decimal. I have 12 ones. We're going to do some decomposing. And making a little extra space here. I'm now going to decompose my 12 ones to 120 tenths. Hmm, well, that's interesting. This little table I made up here before relating 15 to 30 facts uh, has given me uh, an easy route to my answer here. So I am know that 8 times 15 is 120. And we could say that 6 and 5 tenths is not equal to 6 and 8 tenths. Now it says construct your own division problem with a two-digit divisor that has a quotient of 6 and a remainder of 12, but is not equivalent. Okay, well, uh, let's. Uh, we've done problems like this before. So, moving that, uh, let's just kind of construct our problem here. Use a different color. So, I have a division problem. I have 6 with a remainder of 12. And it can't be equivalent to either one of those. Well, the first thing I need to look at is I have to choose a divisor. Once I choose the divisor, I can multiply the divisor times the quotient and add the remainder. Now, since the remainder is 13, or 12 rather, I have to use a divisor bigger than 12. I'm going to pick an easy number. Why not? And we're going to pick a 20. Once I have that 20, I can multiply 20 times 6 and get 120. We'll add 12, and I get 132. So let's work that out. 132. Okay, now without going through all the decomposition, I know that 6 times 20 is 120. I subtract and I get a 12. Now is it equivalent to that? Uh, the other two problems. Well, let's do it the uh, decimal way. So I have 20 and 132. We're going to again use 6. And I think I'm going to do a little erasing here to make some more space. 6 times 20 is 120. I get a 12. Put in my decimal. Decompose. And what do I get? I get a hundred and twenty tenths, and that would be again a six, and we subtract the one hundred twenty, and we're done. So we have another problem here, with the same remainder, the same quotient, but when we solve it as a decimal, we end up with a different decimal number. So again, six and five tenths is not equal to six and eight tenths, and that's not equal to six and six tenths. We'll do a couple other problems here, and I just want to point out the fact that you'll see some related facts. So if you solve one, you can solve the other. We see that the divisors are the same. However, the dividends are not. They use the same digits. However, in G, the dividend is 10 times greater than the dividend in H. So we know that there's going to be a relationship between, we could say that this the uh, quotient 
is going to be 10 times this quotient. Or I could say that this quotient is one-tenth of this quotient. So all we have to do is move the decimal. Let's start solving and get a little review of our algorithm here and some of the steps that we take. Okay, we're going to do some uh, looking here. We're going to uh, 59 does not work with three hundreds. Doesn't work with thirty tens. It does work with three hundred ones. So we'll do a little estimating. I have my three hundred ones, and I'm going to divide that by. Well, what is that round to? Fifty nine rounds to sixty. That worked out pretty nicely, and we can just do a little decomposition here. I'm going to have 300 divided by 10 divided by 6. It's a good procedure to keep you straight so you don't mix up your zeros. That gives 30 divided by 6, which is a basic fact of 5. All right, so let's uh, work that through. Uh, we're going to now multiply the actual fact. 59 times 5, and we get 45, and then we uh, do our regroup, and that is 295. 295. So I'm going to record my 5 in my quotient, and I'm going to record 295 under my dividend. We'll subtract, and we get 5. Well, that kind of works out nicely, doesn't it? Because I now trade my five ones for fifty tenths, I get bring down the nine tenths. I get fifty nine tenths, and that is a one. We subtract, and we're done. So what did we say? We said that this quotient is ten times this quotient. Do we need to work it out? No, we don't. All you want to do is think of five and one tenth. divided by 10, that equals 51 hundredths. Take advantage of any shortcuts like that that you see in your problem set, and you'll find your homework is not nearly as much work. All right, this is very similar to the previous one. In this case, we have the same divisor once again. We look at the dividends, and we can see that they have the same digits, but they're in different places. We can see that this dividend is 10 times this dividend. So we're basically going to use the same strategy, except it's even easier this time. They give us the quotient. So if this is 10 times greater than this, all we have to do is divide our quotient here by 10, because this is one-tenth of our quotient here. So I'm going to take 12 and one-tenth divided by 10. And going back to our very first lessons, we know that we are going to move our digits over one place to the right, which results in the decimal going one place to the left. And we have 1 and 21 hundredths. We'll finish. This is a word problem from your problem set. Well, it's not in your homework, but it's good to look at some examples of worked problems using tape diagrams. Let's read it. A blue rope is three times as long as a red rope. A green rope is five times as long as the blue rope. If the total length of the three ropes is 50 and 25, uh, excuse me, 508 and 25 hundredths meters, what is the length of the blue rope? Okay, well, we're going to start with uh, the red rope because that's our unit here. And we're going to start with this one sentence here, red rope. And we'll just represent that with one little box here, and we'll put an R. And looking at this, blue rope is three times as long as the red rope. So we'll write a B for blue. And we're going to make a box that's about the same size and represent it three, because it's three times as much. Now the green rope is 15 times as long as the blue rope. That's a lot of boxes. I mean, I've got three here, and three times five is fifteen. I'm not going to draw all those, but I'm going to try to approximate. 
and I'm going to put in our uh, 1, 2 ellipsis and we'll go to 15 because 3 times 5 is 15. We know that all of this together equals 5 and 8, five, excuse me, 508 and 25 hundredths meters. Well, how many of these boxes do we have? Well, I have green equals 15, blue is 3, and red is 1. And the total is 19 boxes. So this number, 5, 100, 8, and 25 hundredths, is going to be divided up into 19 parts. 19 equal parts. So, we start our problem. We have 508 and 25 hundredths. We divide it by 19. 19 is close to 20. And 2 times 20 is 40, so we'll try that. Now we're going to multiply my 19 times 2, and I get 38. We'll subtract that. We have 12. That's good. 12 is less than uh, 19. We'll bring down another 8. Uh, I'll use my estimating again, so I think 20 times what equals something close to 128. Uh, how about 120? We have to adjust that, but we'll see. So, uh, I didn't write that correctly. It's 120 divided by 20. And we get 6. So let's try that. We race to make a little more room here. So we record our 6. And we write 19 times 6. I get 54. Regroup my 5. 6 plus, times 1 is 6 plus 5 is 11. 114. That looks like a good estimate. I have 14. We're now going to my tenths place. I'll bring down that too. And I'm going to think 20 times 7. So 20 times 7. Uh, I'm going to do the regular problem here. Let's uh, do a little erasing. So I have 19 times 7. I get 63. Uh, 7 times 1 is 7 plus 6 is 13. So I have 133. I subtract and I get a 9. I bring down my 5. Uh, again, I'm going to think 20s and 95 is close to 100. So 20 times 5 or 19 times 5. We multiply, get a 45, regroup, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9, and we get a 95, it works out nicely, and we put our 5. So what do we have here? Our red rope is going to be 1 unit, so 1 unit equals 26 and 75 hundredths. We want to find the length of the blue rope. So that's going to be 3 units. And 3 units is 26 and 75 hundredths times 3. We'll solve that by multiplying 26 and 75 hundredths times 3. 15, regroup the 1. 21 plus 1 is 22, regroup the 2. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 2 is 20. Regroup the 2. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. And these are hundredths once again, so we'll put the decimal right there. And the length of the blue rope is 80 and 25 hundredths meters.